Okay guys, welcome to another, possibly the worst game ever. Now, <laughs> if this wasn't bad enough playing this game, it's just been made three times as bad because, uh, believe it or not, I played the game and I did a commentary and I realised that the microphone wasn't enabled. So I then did a voiceover and watched the game back again and I've noticed the software was picked the wrong type of microphone, so this is the third time I'm having to sit and watch this. Yeah, anyway, that is my problem, not yours. Right, this is Street Fighter, released uh, on the Commodore Amiga. It was a conversion of the arcade game of the same name. Now, the arcade game, it uh, it had pressure pads, had big kind of boxer, sort of like cushiony type things, pads, basically pads you would use at a boxer, boxer, you know, boxers would use. You basically hit it as hard as you could. The harder you hit it, obviously, the more damage inflicted uh, on your opponent. Now, I've got a slight anecdote about this game, and I have re regaled it on many occasions in videos that I've done. Um, back in 1988, me and my mate, we both had Amigas, and games were quite pricey. I mean, a game, this game was probably about 25, 30 quid. Might have even been slightly more. I don't know if there was 40 quid, but they were certainly about the 30 quid mark. And that was probably, that was, that was like kicking arse off a week's wage, you know what I mean? I had a car to run and that kind of stuff, so it was a lot of money. I mean, it's probably equivalent to about 70 quid now. Um, so what we used to do, rather than buy a game each, <coughs> excuse me, we would mutually decide on a game to buy and then we would chip in, we'd both we'd split the game in half, uh, you know, put money towards it, and then we would take it in turns to keep the game. Now this particular month we decided to buy this and my mate Ian, it was his turn, he was gonna keep this game. So we excitedly rushed into Edinburgh. Um, I don't think we read any reviews of this game, I mean this was before the internet. So we looked at the graphics, we thought that looks really nice. We went into Edinburgh, um, bought it, came back home. Now when we got home, I said to him, look, why don't you go and put the kettle on, make a nice wee cup of tea for us, or a bit of lunch, something like that, whatever it was. But I specifically remember him going into the kitchen to make some lunch for us, and I said to him, look, I'll, I'll load up the game, see what I think yet. So I loaded it up, and I ended up, by the time he came through with my lunch, I'd actually completed the game. Um, <laughs> and he was none too pleased, as you would probably understand. Now, <coughs> this is the first time I've played the game. Ever since I completed it, I have never returned to it until now. Now, you can see here, I mean, the actual sprites are actually quite nice. The sprites themselves look nice until they start moving. I mean, you know, I don't know how many frames of animation there is. Not many at all. Um, the whole, when you can see there, when you jump, the whole screen, the action kind of freezes. Well, the screen scrolling catches up. I mean, we're talking about a Commodore Amiga, and Amiga is capable of beautifully smooth scrolling. You know, full screen hardware scrolling. Um, tons of colours. I mean, the colours in this game are just horrible. It actually reminds me of a an early, early PC game, sort of before. Was it VGA? Um, is it EGA? I think they called it. It's got these horrible kind of brown. Ugh, just disgusting. Now I don't know how, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know how this game would actually stand up to uh, the arcade game. I don't think I've ever played the arcade game. Um, I'll have a look. If I have played it, I'll put a wee link up above. If there's no link appears, it's because I've not played it. Um, but yeah, the, apart from the, the poor scrolling, the poor animation, the actual game is as dull as dishwasher they play dishwasher, as dull as dish water I should say to play. I mean I'm just holding the joystick to the side and I'm just hammering the fire button. Well, there's a there's a real occurrence I actually got got beaten there. I don't know how many moves there were in the arcade one. I don't think it was anywhere near the sequel and that is the that is the, the sort of fascinating thing about this game. If a game ever improved in its sequel, then this game is at the very, very top. I mean, <laughs> Street Fighter 2 is still renowned as the the probably best one-in-one -one fighter game. There may be games 
that have since are since sort of better than it. But for a game that came out almost 30 years ago, it's still as fresh as anything to play. I mean, there's still people play Street Fighter regular. I don't really play it because I'm not a big uh, beat 'em up fan. But uh, you know, Street Fighter has got all the moves. It's got six buttons. It was an awesome game. Now, I'm assuming the guys obviously took, you know, they, they took feedback and they just went away and improved this game tenfold. I had no idea what I did there. I just pressed the fire button. Ryu versus Lee. Now you can see there they're using the original. I mean, Ryu is obviously Ryu, the one that came to love in Street Fighter. Although he's now uh, almost been using the Just for Men. He's gone from being a ginger to a guy with dark hair. I don't know how many moves there were in the arcade version of this, but in this one, you literally just hold the fire button. Sorry, you just stab the fire button as quickly as you can. Um, and hold the joystick to the side, you know, facing your opponent. Thing is, there's a big, big delay, and from when you press the button or move the joystick, there's a delay in between actually responding. So it's just a, it's just an awful, awful game. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't recall us ever uh, take going. I mean, if I think I'd bought this now, I'd probably taken it back and says I'm not, I'm not prepared to pay, pay this, but. Back then, you know, there was no such thing as taking games back. Well, maybe you could, but I certainly didn't do that. So, yeah, this was a... It was a game that was played once, and it was never played again. <laughs> I noticed you can play two players, so I don't know whether you get any more fun out of it. Unlikely, because at the end of the day, it's still a very, very limiting game. Well, you might get slightly more... Uh, slightly more of a challenge playing against a, another human opponent as opposed to the AI of the computer, but... But this is the first time I have played the game since 1988, and it's just as bad. I've got no idea how he's lying there, his head looks like it's bent, back, bent backwards. I don't know if there's any way to, to mute the music. Um, I've always, I've never been a fan of music in arcade games. I always think that sound effects are a huge part of the, the arcade experience. You need sound effects to help you know what you're doing in the game. Um, and, you know, having music just kills that for me. I mean, by all means, have a bit of background music, but don't do it at the expense of the sound effects. You need the sound effects. So there's possibly a key to switch off the music, I'm not too sure. But anyway, listen guys, that is enough. That is Street Fighter, and that's on the Commodore Amiga. As usual, thank you very much for watching.